In ARCHICAD we have surfaces. Those surfaces are found under option element attributes. Surfaces, these used to be called materials, but then when they made building materials, then that name was too confusing, so it became surfaces. Sometimes we also call surfaces textures. Uh, the texture is down here, so the texture is the what we might think of as the image which is added to a surface. So in a way, it's a texture added to a surface and a surface added to a building material. So it all becomes a big long line. In ARCHICAD we're currently using, if I press OK, get out of this for a second, we're currently using for creative imaging our Cine Render engine in version 22, which is part of Cinema 4D by Maxon. We also have the basic renderer and we have the sketch engine. We used to have uh, a few more, uh, but they've changed over the years. The sketch render creates obviously something that's sketchy. The cine render can do both photo rendered and also can do a, a white model render. And then the basic render is basically not worth using. What we're seeing here behind is not even any of these rendered views, but this is just a 3D view or a 3D drawing. And so I'll talk more about that in another video. At the moment, we're just focusing on surfaces. But I showed you this just to say that maybe we don't even need to worry about surfaces. Depending on what you're trying to do, if you're only trying to show form and not materiality, then surfaces aren't that important. And I know a lot of people get carried away with spending time on surfaces, and at the end of the day, if they're just producing documentation, they've wasted a lot of time. So first determine whether you need to worry about surfaces or not. If you do, understand what surfaces are going to look like. So if we change this to a different type of view, then we can see that colors are important. So we might be dealing with vegetation, we might be dealing with wall cladding, we might be dealing with the glass in a window is still a surface and we need to get that surface right. Maybe that surface is right or needing to be right so it can look good in 3D. Maybe that surface needs to look right in elevation. Or maybe we want that surface to look right in a photo render. Now, the reason why I make that distinction is we need to understand them for three different reasons because they have three different responses. So when we're talking about surfaces, we're not actually talking about textures when we're talking about elevations. When we're talking about surfaces, what we can see in this view based on the basic engine or the OpenGL engine may be what we see in the final photo render, which we're using Cine Render, but it might not be. Sometimes we'll be seeing something completely def different in Cine Render. When we're in our Cine Render engine settings, we can have a very different way of setting it up. We can use different methods, we can use different pitches than if we're using our basic engine. And as we look through our list, some of these are standard ARCHICAD, some of these are ones I've made myself, just to make mine a little bit clear, they're all RMD, standing for Robert Mann Design. I now need to change that to Robert Mann Architecture and Design. Uh, but basically, that's just my way of making sure that they all stay together. You see the other ones have a lot of different names. And this list is fairly extensive. If we go into a standard ARCHICAD for a second, this list is a little bit smaller. Well maybe considerably smaller. And when you're looking at this surface list, only the ones that have this little picture at the end, which looks like a landscape picture, maybe that's trees and a sun, have a texture. So if I go into that one, we see there is a texture applied. If I go back into this, bubble wrap, I'm not, I'm not quite sure where we need to use bubble wrap, but it's, a, it's an interesting looking texture. When we have the second box, that means there is a fill applied. So if I go to my vectorial hatching, we can see that there is a fill surface applied. And then if I go back to that list again, some of them have none whatsoever. So if I go to this one, site pond, we see there's no texture, 
there's no background, and that's because we don't necessarily need a texture. A texture is where we want to represent an image. Sometimes we won't be doing that. Sometimes we will want to have an image, maybe, ceramic porcelain, but we can do it in a different way. So we can actually create a surface, not by the basic settings using a texture, but when we're in Cine Render, we can add a lot of different settings. We can add bumps. We can add reflectivity, transparency. We can add shapes. We can add alphas, where we create a grid pattern. So we can create what I would call a vector-based surface, as opposed to what we're really doing in our... basic engine is creating a pixel or a render raster based surface. The problem with a pixel based or raster based surface is it all depends on how good quality your texture is. If your texture is either too small, meaning not enough pixels, so we see that this is only 96 by 45 pixels, so it's too small in its pixel size, or if it's too small in its area, then we might end up with a very boring texture. Similarly, if we choose, I'm not sure if I can find a, a very bad one straight away for you, but if we can choose one that is too repetitious, so it's got a texture like this, but we see that there's some shape, some patterns, in this case it has spots, but we also see it's a mirrored copy or very close to a mirrored copy and we see all these patterns emerging if we repeat those patterns too many times so let's duplicate this times two times three times four because of the variety of color we can very quickly identify repeating patterns and that's a straight up fail if we can see patterns our brains are amazing at finding patterns very quickly which is why sometimes we're better at computers at it which is why we have when we're trying to put in a password maybe it or go access a, a website it'll ask us to find something in an image because our brains are better at that the computers we see patterns our brain sees patterns straight away so if you're trying to create a surface and you're accidentally creating a repetitious pattern someone knows that it's fake and if you're trying to create something that's photorealistic, fake is your enemy. So what do we do? If we don't have a good image, we might need to find one. So we could go take a photo, but it's very hard to get it correct. And in a later video, I'll show you how we can do that. But what we could do is go and source some. There are some websites. Arrowway is probably the most professional that I know of, at least. And you can buy amazing textures. Now I'm not being paid by Arrowway. Uh, you do have to pay for their stuff, but they have amazing quality. They're very, very good and they have a very large range. And so generally you're paying for a very, very high quality texture. Uh, these textures look ridiculously expensive to an Australian viewer maybe, but that's about 800 bucks, 880 bucks. So it's not it's not that ridiculous. It's not 552,000, which I thought it was at first when I had a look at that. So you can buy textures. You can also download them. So here's a few that I have used and seen and browsed through before. Some of them are very weird in terms of, or not very good in graphics at the way they describe it. So if they're, um, if they're advertising textures and not very graphic, maybe that's a bit of a problem, but maybe what they've got as resources is actually pretty good. So check out what they've got. Sometimes these are going to be very useful straight away, sometimes maybe not so much. Let's have a look. What we will be looking for is we want to make sure that a pattern can be stitched together, or another way of saying that is seamless. So if we look at the edge of a file, so let's just go to this one. We want to make sure that there's no inconsistency of color, shade, light from one side to the other, and we want to make sure that corners line up. I'll talk more about this in the video later. So when we're lining up bricks, we have to be very particular about where they line up top and bottom, side to side. So we can make our life a lot easier, our work a lot easier, by finding good pictures to begin with. So it's not always the most interesting one 
that creates the best solution. So if I'm looking at a wall like this, when it's got this grungy concrete cancer rust color running down the wall, that's brilliant. It looks great and it might be very fantastic as a texture, but I can't just multiply this and have rust here and then rust here and repeat it over and over again. It doesn't work. So we need to understand how surfaces work, how they repeat, and how they're going to look in Archicad. And we can quite quickly look that up in Archicad by creating a surface or attaching a surface and then seeing what happens when we repeat it like this. So let's find another one, choose the brick, and we see it's repeating. Now the joins are working pretty well. We still see a bit of color difference from one side to another, but it's not that bad. Some of them are far worse. So we want to find something that is clear, something that is interesting maybe as well, maybe something that's creative, maybe we need to make our own. And there's a lot of websites that we can download this information from straight away. And someone's already gone to the effort of usually making them beautiful, seamless textures for us. So we don't need to do that ourselves. And in a later video, in previous ones, you can already check out my channel and have a look at some of the videos I've done. I've created custom-made surfaces before, and I will show you how to do that again, where we can find an image online, maybe, and as long as we've got permission, we can use it to create a very interesting surface.